Hello. Hello. How I'm are so you? happy you could be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. Of course. Well, and um, thanks for uh, hanging on and, uh, and waiting for me. I, <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah, not a problem. I um, was um, searching the internet while I waited for like the world's most adorable things. So like oh. it wasn't wasted time. Okay. Uh, yeah. That's what I like to hear. What were yeah. some of the uh, most adorable things? Oh my gosh. I landed on this BuzzFeed article that was like just cute animals. And I just needed cute animals today. So I would say some days you just need cute animals, but I think every day. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Most especially today. Yes. 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 So how okay. are you? I am doing well, like planning for the end of the year and kind of like lost in how to manage everything that like has to happen on a day-to-day -day basis along with planning. So, um, yeah, the whole like end of 2016 thing is it's coming up fast and it is. Yeah. Like, yeah. That was like the quickest eight weeks ever. And of course it's the eight weeks that I would want to savor because I love fall the most yeah. and it never happens no matter yeah. how hard I try. I know. I know. I'm just like trying to be able to, I don't know. There's like a part of me that believes that everybody should have the month of December off. Like somehow like the weather, you know, the days get shorter and the weather gets colder and it just feels like you're supposed to like not be putting out so much energy. I mean, it's not even light enough. It's dark when my husband leaves for work and it's dark by the time he comes home. So like there should be some shift there yes so and I keep telling myself oh I'm gonna unpack more god it's so bad we've been here for a couple weeks already I'll unpack more uh when he gets home and it's dark and I'm like oh after dark nothing can really get no <laughs> <laughs> which is so funny because usually like I get the most work done at night so now I'm in this weird limbo where I'm like crap I guess I just don't work now <laughs> yeah it's all nighttime yes yeah yes so I would love for you to tell us um, a little bit about yourself, what you do, and, and what comes to mind. Sure. Oh, my goodness, all the things. Um, huh? Well, personally, um, I live in Seattle with my husband and our um, adorable animals. I have my dog sitting here sleeping, snoring, and there are other dogs in the house. So uh, if you hear barking, that's them, and they're not mine. Um <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but professionally speaking, I um, have a hard time finding a word that captures it all. Um, I've tried voice and messaging mentor. I think that's as close as I've gotten so far. I do a mixture of copy work, workshops and retreats, and one-on-one -on -one mentorships with both soulful entrepreneurs and other creative humans. I love that. Now, like, why? Why did you choose those? I know that recently you were talking about, or talking about, you were kind of shifting into the in-person workshop kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, and maybe I'm more interested in that than I am in everything else personally, but yeah. I'm sure that the people watching are interested in it all. So whatever you wanted to tell us about. Well, um, I think it goes back pretty far. I was born a writer. Like I was born a creative. I think you were born a creative as well. Um, and I mean, I kind of think I have this hunch that we're all really born creative. Um, mm -hmm. and that somewhere in there, whether, you know, through a partner or a parent or a teacher, um, teacher. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. That innate, <laughs> ability to connect with a creative spirit within you is denied or wounded or shut down or whatever. So, um, but it's important. I like that you said wounded. Yes. Cause it's not, it's not completely blocked off. It's mm -hmm. not, you're not a creator anymore because someone told you you're not, or because exactly. you were raised yes. to be molded into one. So I like yeah. that. Sorry for interrupting, but no. that's extremely yeah, important. Yeah. yeah. I, and it breaks my heart. Uh, that it happens that way. Cause I think that for so many of us, it happens that way. And for me, it wasn't necessarily one person. I think that it was a mixture of my perfectionism and um, you know, I did really, really well academically. And sometimes in our 
culture, the academic side and the creative side somehow like aren't supposed to go together. So I thought I only, I could only be one thing. Um, and so I lost the fact that I was a writer and I like literally come from 85% of my family writes or publishes or edits like for a living, have no idea why I didn't think that could be a thing. I don't. Were you thinking maybe to take the road less traveled or were you even? I didn't even think about the fact that they could do it. Like didn't even. Yeah. There are so many things that looking back, I'm like, oh, those are so natural for me. I don't know why, you know, like I teach and I never thought teaching could be a possible. I don't know. Um, so I think it starts back in that I was an Emma creative and my personal favorite mode of creative expression is through writing, but I do it through a lot of other things. I paint and I sing sometimes not well and I dance always not well and (laughs) (laughs) not at all. Yeah. Um, And I kind of like that, like in terms of creativity, like it really doesn't matter about the product it's the experience and then the ability to gift that experience to an audience um and I cook as well but uh, about a year ago you know this but obviously everybody else doesn't um I closed down my first business which I was a health coach um and realized that I didn't really care about nutrition and therefore should not be a health coach right Uh, (laughs) It's funny that also didn't occur to me. Um, was, that like a, was that like an instant click or was it like slowly over time? You're like, what am I doing? Yeah, it was slowly over time. It was like, I don't care about this. Mm-hmm. And like, I eat healthy. I like to eat healthy. I like the way my body feels, but it was more like trying to teach other people. There was just no zing to it whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I closed down that business and kind of went on a reset And a friend of mine um, who I had met like in this online entrepreneurship world, she said, Katie, like you've always been a writer. Like I've been telling you for years because I've been writing this entire time, not even realizing that it's touching people. Um, And it was the one thing over the two years that I was a health coach that I really, really loved. And she was like, you have to do something with it. So last year I put out an offer um, to do some editing for people and it just clicked and I've been expanding since then. So one of the things I realized, I'm sorry, this is so long. Um, no, it's, it's about you. Oh, well, conversation. You're good. Um, one of the things I realized, so I started working on um, online entrepreneurs website copy and their content um, was that when you, somewhere in, in the middle of what I call, I call it copy polishing. Like I polish up people's copy. Um, I make it sing for them. And somewhere in the process, there's an element of permission that happens between me and my clients where all of a sudden they're able to kind of come back to center. Cause it's really hard to like, not fall into the trap of listening to like 10 tips for this, or this is all the way you should show up or whatever. Should. Yeah. The shoulds and the supposed tos, it like knocks us off kilter so that we don't show up as ourselves anymore. Um, and I recognized like, as I was working with my clients that there was this moment where they clicked back into place, um, and they could start creating more freely because they just like the fear and the apprehension about whether or not they were showing up in the right way kind of melted away and they were just able to show up as themselves. So I started doing one-on-one mentorships, which has led to, um, really realizing that, uh, that like unlocking is the thing that I'm really excited about both for entrepreneurs, but also all of us creative humans that have kind of been wounded along the way. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'm doing now. That's so big. And that's one of the things as I, as I meet with more people, uh, my last interview, which it may be posted before this one, it may not be, I'm not sure. <laughs> with my mom. What? And she, right. And I, w- I was like, you know, what? I need to interview my mom because I've never sat down and interviewed her before besides like, you know, those little kid things where it's like, what's your favorite color? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so I was like, I'm going to have a real conversation with my mom. And so we did. And the thing is, 
she's not an online entrepreneur. She, uh, she does some, she does have a business, but it's not like full entrepreneurship, right. you know, under uh, an umbrella. And I just, just talking, having conversations with people both in and out of the entrepreneurship realm. Yeah. Uh, showed me how, I mean, we're all alike, how much we're all alike and how much yeah. we all could use services like this. And have you found it so far kind of difficult to reach out to people who aren't entrepreneurs or have you gone that route yet uh, to help them kind of find their creative voice? Yeah. So um, uh, probably three months ago, I would say, was when I decided that I wanted to um, branch out beyond the world of online entrepreneurship. Um, and so that has been, it's definitely been difficult because all of the ways that I've been able to reach my peers in like the entrepreneurship world has been online and um, particularly, I'm so sorry about the dogs, um, particularly on Facebook. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think somebody's home. Um, <laughs> and most of the creative humans that live outside of that realm, they don't, they don't live on Facebook. They live either out in the world, which is beautiful and we should all live out in the world. Yes. Um, or they live on Instagram or Twitter or Snapchat or whatever. Um, and so it's been hard to try and figure out how to reach them. So I formed my first official Facebook group. Um, and, uh, that, has been created with the intention of being not about entrepreneurship, just about creative expression in its purest form, um, which I think reaches us, like you were saying, like whether we're entrepreneurs or just human beings in general. Um, so it's been tough. I'm planning my first non business related retreat Ooh, that's and so that's exciting. super exciting. Um, but it definitely makes it, um, I was talking to somebody the other day about, you know, being kind of a multi-passionate human being. And sometimes it means that like you feel it's almost impossible to hold all of the different places and not to feel like it's chaos. Yeah. Yeah. Let me know if you need me to pause because of them. I don't even know. No, it's fine. Right. They're really okay. not that. I mean, okay. You can hear them. We know that there are dogs. Yes. And that's okay. Yeah. But they're not, they're not being so distractingly loud. Okay. Then again, if they're distracting to you, I completely mm -hmm. get that as well. Yeah, um, no. I'm good. But I love the idea of bringing, and I know this, uh, as I am constantly harping, this isn't about, this uh, Chat Connect isn't about uh, entrepreneurship. Yeah. Or business. But it definitely comes up, obviously, especially if it's something Thing that's so ingrained in you and is right. such a part of your life and you love it so much. Yeah. But what I want, I love that you are putting together retreats that aren't just for the entrepreneurs and that are in person. In person is such a big yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, that's how you and I really first chatted fully was in person because how I was in that. Oh. Um, so that was great to be able to do. I love that. And I haven't yeah. been able to do that with many people yet. So, yeah. uh, it's been wonderful, but I, Oh, I, I wish that there was a way. And I don't know if you have any ideas to encourage, um, people who, you know, work in the corporate world or are stay at home parents or whatever, who have different backgrounds and different walks of life mm. to come on these retreats without thinking, Oh, I don't have the time or the money, or this is selfish or things like that. Yeah. I don't know how to, frame that for people that this could be something big for them and they've got to do something for them. Yeah. Uh, in a while. You know, I think, um, I've been thinking a lot about that and a lot about, uh, creative expression outside of the business realm. And just the fact that I think it's a, it's a life force for us, right? Like, um, we tend to have this like list of priorities in our, our creativity and our like community building um, tend to come last on the list. You know, we've got like whatever is going to pay the bills and then we've got to cook and we've got to work out. Like we have these things where we end up only seeing our coworkers, if we're lucky to have coworkers or our partner or our pets, 
or possibly none of them. Um, and we're missing out on something that I think is essential. I mean, I'm like a diehard Brene Brown fan, um, like a diehard. And, <laughs> and she always talks about how, you know, in all of her studies and her research, we're built for human connection. And these in-person things, they connect us in a way that I think um, we don't necessarily get when we're focusing on the to-dos in our, in our world. Um, and I also like the most life-giving experiences I've ever, ever had other than like being married and having my little fur babies um, have been found away from it all. Like I need, even for myself, like I need either time away by myself or I need time away like with my partner or I need time away with my girlfriends. Like I need to have time away from it all. And I consider it like an investment in my health because I might crack if I don't. And I think we're all kind of cracking a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I think so too. Well, and like with so many, not that I want to harp on, you know, on medicine or mm -hmm. prescriptions or anything like that. But with all of that, you got to think that maybe um, some of these like retreats or doing things for yourself, maybe they could help with some of those. Yeah. Not that they're, not that your illness is going to be magically cured or anything like that. But I mean, if you are prone to stress and you just are always feeling stressed out, mm -hmm. maybe it's time to take a step back. I mean, that may not be how our parents or our grandparents lived, but they also you know, didn't have all of these stress, of course, every year it gets more stressful and there are yeah. new things to worry about. But yeah. um, I just, I don't know. I, I feel like a lot of people, because they were raised in families where their parents didn't do something like that, that's mm -hmm. really reflected in how they are living now. And they're kind of um, objecting to it. Even if they don't feel like they are, they're just, it's just, they feel like it's, I don't know. Like it's not yeah. something. I don't know. I don't think it's a worth thing. I think it has everything to do with, well, I don't need that. If my right. need that. Yeah. I also think, um, I'm speaking for myself here that like there once was a time where I just thought that if I read enough books, I would be able to figure it out myself. Like mm -hmm. particularly my own stuff. Right. Like I just figured like, this is, it's totally my academic brain, right? Where I'm like, I'll just read a book on it. I'll just read a book mm -hmm. on how to get over anxiety or how to be grateful or how to be happy or um, whatever it is that feeling that I wanted to feel was. Um, but like things are revealed, like layers are unearthed when you're able to see your life at a little bit of a distance. And I particularly, particularly find that like the time away um, with writing prompts and then having a community of people that you're able to kind of break that down with them. Um, and that like intentional held space where like you have an expert um, who is able to maneuver and navigate those subjects and be able to kind of create the wholehearted community that you want to have. Um, like things happen in those spaces that there's no room for them in your normal life. Um, yeah. So I know for me, like I've gone on retreats or like gone camping and just journaled and like stuff shows up that like, I never would have found that out by myself, like sitting, you know, in front of my computer or reading a book or even probably in therapy. Right. Well, and um, not only that, but when you're, when you're kind of, I mean, retreating is one thing and then retreating with other people is another thing because mm -hmm. you're able to get other perspectives and you're also there not to distract each other. So like if you're right. going on a family vacation, there's always, there's constant distractions <laughs> and you're never fully relaxed. Um, yeah. And I know that, and I don't have kids, like I know it yeah. as a kid in a family vacation yeah. situation. Um, so there's always something going on, but I went on my first 
mm. business retreat. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do this uh, when I say it because it was business, but it was so much more. Right. And there was, there was plenty of alone time, but in talking with each other, talking things out, we'd write it down if we felt the need to, or we'd paint about it or whatever, but talking things out really right. um, is huge. Like it gives you such a new perspective on your own work or life or health or whatever it is. And it's not full of the shoulds, the yeah. package shoulds that books can be filled with and that, you know, uh, sometimes group courses can be filled with, with yeah. like one-on-one kind of thing. So, um, but I'm like really interested in what you're going to be, do you know what you're going to be doing for this first retreat? So this first retreat, oof, there are so many dreams that are happening. Like my, I feel like my brain is on overload just because, you know, I've been journaling about like all of the things that I want next year to look like and then beyond. Um, added to the list is December off. Um, <laughs> but uh, I think for this first one, um, uh, what I've decided to do is to open it up to um, kind of journaling, like this mixture of spaciousness and structure. So um, being able to have the time to really go into yourself and reflect and write. I also have um, a ton of other craft stuff so that people can paint or collage or create in whatever way is speaking to them. But it's going to be about about unpacking our own stories. So whatever like that one story is in your world that's like really triggering right now, um, we're going to unpack that. Future topics are things like play, like just having a weekend where you allow that like you know, that self-consciousness that especially we as women tend to, um, put on when we're teenagers. Mm -hmm. Um, I think probably like when we're, it never goes away. Yeah. (laughs) And I don't know that you can play or be as creative as you want to be in your life, your business, your relationship. Um, when you have that layer of self-consciousness present, I don't know that we find the intimacy or, Um, the connection that we desire when we have that layer on us. And so one of my retreats I'm planning on just being one where we like, um, it's kind of a, you know, deep concept of embodiment, like actually being physically present in our bodies and then Mm -hmm. shedding, shedding all those shoulds and supposed tos and self-consciousness and being able to just meet in like real joy and also like honoring whatever else comes up because joy is not always the only thing that comes up, but, um, being able to like fully engage in that. Yeah. That's tremendous. Yeah. I'm really excited about it. I love that so much. And these, um, these in-person things, is it because you experienced, um, some, in-person retreats and, and you thought that you wanted to go from there or, or how, how did that spawn? Um, one, I think it's really lonely to be an online entrepreneur. Like I am really grateful to have been able to meet humans like you, um, and to be able to have the technology to be able to reach out and like connect like this because my God, I am fun, but I am not fun to be around 24 seven. Like I need other people. (laughs) um so that's one of the reasons is I was like there has to be something like we can like like just touch each other um and not always feel like we're in this little office bubble but um actually for four years after I graduated from college I leading retreats is what I did I did it for high school students in particular but um it was one of my favorite things that I've ever done in my whole life Um, I'm still unpacking all of the gifts that that particular job um, gave to me, but one of them was the ability to be able to create experiences. Um, And I don't think you get that online. I think that being able to be in the same space and like share meals together, um, there's like magic that happens when people come together in person. So I'm really excited about it. And I think that you're right. Like I'm still struggling with like how to. Uh, convince, not convince, but uh, engage people in terms of uh, 
that the investment, like they don't even know that the investment is worth it until they go, you know? And so, um, to be able to create a community online that is like, yes, I like, oh my gosh, if I could like hug and touch these people and like share a bottle of wine or tea and coffee in the morning over breakfast. (laughs) Yes. That people, I think people crave that kind of stuff. I don't know that like in our world, like these small world, like sometimes it's nice to connect with somebody who's not so intimately connected to us. So, mm-hmm. but yeah, that's where that Again, came it has, from. It's that, it's that other perspective thing. Yeah. Because as much as I know that my husband or my family's perspectives are not my own, they are very closely aligned. Yeah. Uh, maybe not all the time. Maybe it's one of those things where when we're together, it, it shows up more, but it's, yeah. It's it's gaining a new perspective, and yeah. I retreats are so important for everything about us and for the other people. And yeah. so, I know investment can seem astronomical. Yeah. If you break it down, or you think about opening yourself up to that, or giving yourself space and time to just you know be with yourself and with this group of people, then yeah, it's I mean it's worth it. It's always worth it. And yeah. I just keep going on about it. I believe it. I, I would like to know, I know that you like to retreat by yourself mm-hmm. and you're so beautiful with your words. I'm wondering, does that come from any kind of introversion? What do you consider yourself, an introvert, an extrovert? Is there some in between there? Yeah, I consider myself an extroverted introvert. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that most writers are scared of this. Like most writers would be incredibly happy to sit behind their Word document or Google Drive or whatever it is that they write on. And um, not all of them, but like it, it's an introverted profession. Um, and it's good because I think that sometimes creativity craves solitude. Um, I was just reading uh, Mary Oliver expert excerpt about silence and space and how important that is for creativity. But um, I do like to retreat by myself, but mostly because it just gives me silence every once in a while. I don't have a whole lot of that in my, in my life. The yeah. dogs and, you know, right? <laughs> all of that kind of stuff. So I think that that's where that comes from. But um I like people. I just need to be alone every once in a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, that's, that's totally fair. I think everyone needs to be alone every once in a while. Yeah. Um, yeah. But again, if you're, if it's just you behind a computer, that's not necessarily it. Like for me, being alone truly means either a book in the bath, which I finally just mm. like, I haven't taken it. Okay. This sounds gross. I haven't taken a bath in two years. I mean, like I you haven't, showered. Like, Right, right. I haven't gotten to like sit in a bathtub. I was so happy because our new place has a bathtub. And so I finally did that the other day, but I actually like took a nap instead of reading. I took a book in there with oh my me, gosh. but I just like fell asleep That's and it so was nice. glorious because my mind stopped racing and I don't know yeah. how that happened because usually in silence, my mind races. Is that how it is for you? Or are you able to like calm it down? Um, you know, what's interesting is it really depends on the environment. If I'm here in my home, I think racing is involved. Um, If I am ironically in my car, like sometimes I just like to sit with my car off, just sit. Um, Or if I'm in nature, it like calms down and like other stuff shows up. I feel more connected in a way in that, like, despite the fact that there are always people around me here, like I feel more connected when I'm not in this space, when I'm out in nature or whatever. Right. Yeah. I, uh, mine is back and forth. I feel like anywhere I am, my mind races unless I like stop and focus on my breathing, which is a more recent thing that I've been doing. (laughs) Not like I'm, not like I'm breathing too quickly all the time. Like like when I'm talking. Yeah. Um, but sometimes like I count and yeah. breathe in, breathe out, hold it. And that has helped. And that's honestly how I took my nap yesterday. That's <laughs> like, so I was wonderful. Like, 
Um, but yeah. it was, it was fabulous. Um, that sounds so and so I, I was just curious because I feel like all of your, all of your posts that I see on Facebook and all of your updates, you seem very, um, in tune. I'm not going to say like with nature, but like wherever yeah. you're at and, um, and comforting and uh, relaxed and maybe that's just your voice but I was curious as to whether that was also like you or if sometimes you're just like this you know oh uh yeah <laughs> yeah my husband's not here to share it with you but yes that's where I live sometimes is <laughs> um you know it actually um it's funny because I think that most people assume that a writer writing actually comes easily. Um, and it does when it does like when it's right. flowing, it's going, but like, um, a lot of the time, like, especially because I get on my computer and Facebook is there and Instagram is there. Like my email pops up or somebody texts me. And so, um, it's really hard to find that place that I, that you experience my writing from. Um, it's like an actual practice of having to do that. Like I do the in for four beats, hold for four beats, breathe out for four beats, hold mm -hmm. for four beats. Um, I really, I think that that's my creative voice that you're experiencing. Um, but it is not for sure my everyday all the time. <laughs> right yeah 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 I wish I that's wish. one of those things where I like I wonder when I look at Anna Ferris and Chris Pratt for example I, they're always like the first ones that come to mind yeah they're adorable they are both freaking hilarious but when they're home are they just like not fun like are they very not necessarily yeah. serious but more relaxed or do you think that they are just like goofy all the time right yeah <laughs> So that's something I, I secretly most of the time wonder about people, though now you know that I wonder that about you and I wonder that about the two of them. So. I think, um, so one of the things that comes with my creativity, and I don't know if it comes with everybody's creativity, but I know that for me, um, this is something that it's taken a long time for me to embrace and love about myself, is that with my creativity also comes with sensitivity. Um, so I'm not like super high anxious and I'm not super depressive, but I do have my moments where um, I, I feel like my family knew this the whole time, but I'm like super sensitive. Like I cry commercials. I watched previews for we went to go and see the new Harry Potter movie. What's the new Harry Potter? Yeah. Fantastic Beast. It was so good. It was so good. But <laughs> in the previews, there was one preview with this movie with Will Smith in it. And yes. I lost myself in it. And I started sobbing. <laughs> and then I was like, what movie are we here to see again? Because I want to see that one. Right. But um, if only we could be like, can we watch that one now? I'll watch this other one later. Yeah. <laughs> you know. I picked that. Um, so I think, I think I, uh, possibly my writing comes across centered maybe. Um, but I'm not all the time, but I work to try and be. Um, and I think that, you know, kind of going back to like the business type stuff, um, you know, we work really hard with our, our brands and how we show up in the world and that kind of stuff. But, um, I think I've been really fortunate because perhaps because my business is such a creative one um, or creatively aligned one, it just gets to be me, which ends up being like cozy, comfortable. I mean, I'm in sweats right now. You can't see, but I'm in sweats. So like just that's what I, that's what I hope. I hope that people's, it sounds so weird, like their heart rate slow a little bit when they read my stuff. So that it kind of whispers as opposed to screams, which I think most of the stuff on the internet screams. So, yeah, yeah. And the, and the problem is, so many of the things on the internet scream the same thing. Yeah, because people get lost, like they lose their voices yes. uh, when screaming. Yes. And when you're screaming, you can't listen to other people. 
So it's really difficult because it's like, here's my perspective. I need you to know it. And but at the same time, it's a perspective that you totally gained from someone else. And yeah. And then there's no, there's no engagement there. There's no one wanting to be anywhere near you though. Some people are attracted by that because they're like, Oh, this person is shouting through the noise, but it's like, I don't know if I want to be, that has been an issue with me in being Mm. with social media on a regular basis. Like I questioned it so many times, but I know that I'm good at helping people get visible without yelling through the noise with being themselves. And so that's one thing. That's why I keep sticking with it. Yeah. Cause we need it so much. Yes. We need people who are going to be refreshingly I don't want to say like refreshingly honest but like refreshingly themselves um I know that when I was like a health coach that was so hard because the messages are they're all the same and yet they're all over the place like none of them are really trustworthy and um again it was like talking about stuff that I didn't really wasn't really invested in and I think maybe that's what happens too is like a lot of people tend to share things that they all, they're all the same things and none of them are really invested in it. They just think that they should. And it's, right. yeah. Well, I mean, I guess that they could be helping someone, but if you're saying the same thing as everyone else, it's like, yeah. it's not helping anyone. No. Um, and when it comes to just like a health coach and anything else, everyone's bodies and perspective and everything else and the way that they will find success, everything's different. Yeah. And so it's really difficult you know, to preach one thing and that'll work for a, a select population, but it won't work for everyone. And then automatically yeah. it's like, oh, that's not, oh, whatever you said doesn't work. And it's right. like, oh, it's really difficult. And um, I praise you for being a health coach because I don't know what I would do. Like I try different things and I used to be like, oh, that didn't work. Oh, they're yeah. lying. But now it's like, no, I know it's because my body composition is completely different from, you know, theirs or other mm-hmm. people having success with it. Yeah. Um, but I feel like a lot of people don't realize that in business as well. Right. Um, I can't tell. I, I feel like there's some kind of limbo right now where there's people who are really excited about business in a, in a box kind of thing. Like, Oh, this is how I did it. And this is how you can do it too. Yes. And then there's this other side where it's like, but I want to find my own and yes. the sh- shoulds and, and what you have to do isn't, isn't right for everyone. And so I'm not, right. I'm still trying to find the balance between the two in my own messaging mm-hmm. because I'd love to help people figure out where to start, but I don't necessarily want to be like, well, if, if you answer this, then you should, then you need to be starting here. It's right. like, uh, uh, but a lot of people also, that's another thing that I found, at least for myself, is that people in general don't want to just hop on a call with me because they, I think it's because they feel like it's going to end in a pitch. And that's not what I want to do. I want to help people further along. Yeah. And I don't know. Do you do calls? Um, I do. So I have, um, I have on my website, I have like 30 minute calls that you can block out. Um, just to kind of talk about where you are. Those are for people who, um, are ready to hire somebody. But in my Facebook group, the creative wonder collective, I have 45 minute. Um, I call them collective hours, which obviously they're not an hour, but 45 minutes. Um, where it's just designed to like connect with somebody and talk about wherever they're stuck, just, and I say this like explicitly, like for the pure intention of being able to connect with one person and talk about what's going on with you with like no ulterior motive. Um, I've never pitched except for when somebody has asked me. Um, and that was really wonderful was just, and I got that idea from Sherry Teagman because she's amazing. And she was like, Mm -hmm. just connect with people. And like, if they like what's happening, if they're the right people, they'll hire you or they won't hire you and they'll hire you later. Like, but just being able to be really explicit and say, you know, this is just a chance for me to talk things out with you and be able to get to know you better. And it's also helped me figure out what kind of content will be able to help the people that I, 
like desperately adore, you know, like the questions that they ask end up being blog posts or emails or Facebook posts and stuff like that in a way that feels like I'm just speaking to that one person. Yeah. So, yeah. That's yeah. so cool. Well, and I saw that you were in Chicago recently mm -hmm. and how did you, how did you like Chicago? Um, I love Chicago. I cannot for the life of me do the whole laptop lifestyle thing. Yeah. Like I have these dreams of like being able to do that. Um, and I got like more work than I thought I would get done, <laughs> um, done. I really loved being there and just being able to like be in a new city and a new place and all of that kind of stuff. I like, I like the travel thing, but the whole travel and work thing is not quite as, as easy as they right. would need you to believe. Right. I yeah. mean, it's something that it looks grand. Mm -hmm. I know I, I, that's how I actually got into this whole online entrepreneur thing is I saw that someone had liked someone else and yeah. the person was like, that's basically what their business is around at this point is helping people to come up with the kind of business that they can lead that life, that laptop lifestyle. And I just, I think that things get really chaotic. So unless I'm going to go and stay somewhere for a couple of months, mm -hmm. I don't know if um, a few days really helps. I, though I will say when I was in Seattle, it was, I did okay, but I was also by myself right. and I don't, and I don't intend to like, travel solo very often just because right. I mean I've got my travel buddy and my sister and I've got my husband when he's available so that's kind of like right. I don't I don't often travel alone yeah yeah and I think that it was good in terms of like it was fine for things that like could be time flexible but like trying to work around phone calls and the change in time zones and all of that kind of stuff. I just didn't really feel present to either experience. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That makes, that makes sense. And yeah. how long were you away from home? Like a week and a half almost. Yeah. Yeah. But like I went with my husband and so he, I would like, I like to sit, go to high school visits with him. I'm so, such a dweeb. I like totally adore my husband. And so <laughs> I just like any chance I can get, especially during the two months of the year that he's, he's like gone for oh, yeah. September, October. So any chance I can get to even commute with him, I'm going to take that chance. So, um, I was like going all around Chicago. He's a college admissions counselor and sitting outside in the car and like reading my book or journaling or like on my phone, trying to answer emails while he was inside. But, um, it didn't like leave a whole lot of time to be able to schedule calls and stuff like that. But right. yeah. I mean, I get it. That's okay. I would assume for people who aren't holding calls on a regular basis. Yeah. Um, probably but, easier. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. maybe at one point that's what your business would evolve into. I don't know. Only time will tell. Yeah. Well, I love the idea. Like eventually what I want to do is head into retreats and workshop being workshops being most of the time. And like when I'm on vacation, just really being able to be on vacation and not have any copy work to do or not have any, um, calls to make and stuff like that so that I can, I keep coming back to like just being present to the moment, um, and to the experience at hand, which I think is why I love retreats and workshops is that it, I'm just there. Like we're like there in that moment and we're working stuff out right then. So Right. Well, and another thing is, as I've run um, a couple of, of uh, sessions of my group program and, and I've been parts of other, other programs, both one-on-one -on -one and group that are away from a distance, yeah. uh, people aren't always fully invested in it. They may have invested money, but like right. life happens, then they can't do it. So when, when it comes to a retreat, you are there. And yes, sometimes life happens also, but you are... Yeah there. Yeah. And so I think that's super important to be able to give your full attention to whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking a lot about that. There's a, there's a group that does like online retreats. Um, and I just kept thinking like my attention is split in a million different directions when I'm 
at home in front of my computer and like, yeah, like I would have to go rent a hotel room. To yeah. That. Yeah, exactly. And I might as well go on a retreat. Right. In theory, yeah. uh, it sounds okay. Um, but yeah, it's, yeah. If I mean, if I can't be in person for something, then I'm just, I'll just do something on my own. Right. Maybe that's something I need to do at one point. Um, yeah. My friend's husband got her a hotel room just for her mm. for one night and he stayed and watched their two young kids. And I was like, like, that was really sweet. And I don't have kids, but sometimes I just need like a yeah. blank slate around me and not have to worry about other things. And maybe that's just something I need to think of. It. Maybe that's something that everyone needs to think of every once in a while is just... Yeah. You could be in the same city, just just try to distance yourself a little bit. Yeah, I was thinking about taking a writing retreat of my own, like just renting an Airbnb for a night or something like that and just being able to do that. But I also, um, I also know that there are some people who like, they, they do like every course they ever sign up for or like are fully present. You know people who do all yeah. of them? How? I have a really hard time because because I have them and I keep them I know. and I'm like, I will do this. I will do this. And they're still yeah. there. They're the worst. I know. I keep thinking about like, mm -hmm. as the year is wrapping up, I'm like, Oh, I have to go back and do modules like six through nine. Oh, like what? Yeah. yeah. It's, um, it's really hard. And I think it's also hard because you and I both do courses and workshops and like knowing that people don't finish them knowing that I don't finish them um, right. makes me want to create something different and something that's more accessible and something that's actually easily integratable. Um, but yeah. Yeah. I want to get as close to the in-person experience as possible, but it's really difficult. I mean, yeah. you are miles and miles away, but at the same time, it's huge that people are able to create things like this yeah. where you can get the knowledge and the support and everything from so far away. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's one of the, it's one of those things that I'm, I'm, I'm torn on because yeah. I love it. I love information and I didn't love learning until after I graduated. Of course. <laughs> so it's you know, not I get forced. to learn about things I want to learn about. Yeah. Yes, exactly. I was yeah. telling someone the other day that I don't think that I read a book for pleasure, like starting in middle school through high school I may have read a couple in college because they it just because That's of the so heartbreaking I know, you know? Oh. and I used to love reading and I'm really getting back into it but it's one of those things where I'm gonna have to like set aside specific time every day otherwise it's not gonna yeah. get done it's one yeah. of those things that gets pushed down yeah yeah but when it comes mm -hmm. to books are you gonna write one of them I have dreams of writing a book I've had a few ideas I'd started one. Oh, I go back and forth. I mean, I do really want to. I do really want to. And I'm thinking it'll probably be a collection of essays as opposed to like a... For some reason, my brain works in chunks when I create. Like the idea of approaching an entire book feels like... Oh. It's so daunting. <laughs> Like, so even daunting. if I was to look at an outline, I'd be like, nope, I don't know about that. Um, well, then, like, do you take a retreat over a week and do it? Or do you break it up over time? Or yeah. you know? I don't know. I don't know. And I'd have to, like, really be in the, really be in the mood. Like, the muse would have to speak if I was going to do it, like, really quickly. And um, But it is, it's, like, one of those things that's on my list of maybe someday kind of things yeah I don't know I'd enjoy it well thanks and maybe maybe you should just write and write and write whenever you feel called and then yeah. one day that could turn into your collection of essays that's so funny that you said that because when I was talking with my mom mm -hmm. um I since I was little I've always said she should write a book mm -hmm. I, I mean there are so many things she could write a book about. And she yeah. told me, she said, I don't know how I would write. Like, I don't know if it would be a collection of essays or yeah. like one subject line. And, it, and then I took the advice uh, that she had just given my grandma a couple weeks before who my grandma is writing a book right now. Cool. Finally, like, 
she started a while ago and then you know my grandpa was sick for a long time and so she's wow. taking care of him now she's getting back to it and she told my mom I don't know how I'm gonna write this section like she was talking to her about ah, I need to format and blah 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 and my mom said just write and go back later and format it the way you want to so yep of course, as you write on a regular basis, just remember that. Just write. Just then, write. I know. Part of it later, great. And if it's not, great. Yeah. It's part of something else, whether it's, it could just be part of your growth and that's all you need it for. Right. Yeah. I, you know, when I was in Chicago, um, I was reading Love Warrior by Glennon Doyle Melton, which like cracked me open and split me in two. Um, and all of a sudden I got this like, incredible creative inspiration. I was like, I know what I need to write. Like probably 15 pages of my notebook are dedicated to just notes about what I would write about this specific topic. That topic being, um, my perfectionism and like my, uh, identity as a good girl and kind of how I've been able to rewrite that story for me, for myself within the context, particularly of like my experience within, um, my faith life and spirituality and moving in and out and through and all of that. Right. Um, and I was like, wow, this is like really big. Like I really need help um, working out all of this stuff that like, as soon as you touch something that is like so tender, all of like the nasty shadows, they just come creeping out, you know? And so I called up my therapist and I was like, uh, can you squeeze in an appointment, please? And um, that's been helpful, but I think it's also something about, it's like those creative processes. So weird. Something about wrestling with the shadows by myself, mm -hmm. I think would have led to writing. Instead, I've worked out a lot of the stuff by myself with her and, um, the juice is gone. So maybe it'll come back. Like maybe that will float through again. And she was, she gave me the exact same advice though. She was like, stop thinking about what it's going to look like. Just write, like write the middle, write the end, write whatever you want to write, but um, just get it down on paper. We do edit before things even start. So that's what I was finding myself doing, but we'll see if that comes back again. Yeah. yeah. I hope so. Yeah. Thanks. I hope so. Thank um, you. And you're right, though, with us editing before we even start, it is an issue. Yeah. It is. And I feel like a lot of people don't see it as an issue, but it's like, if you don't think you're creative, then that starts right there where you're editing yourself before you can even start. Or a lot of, I feel like a lot of it comes from a, a potentially a fear of um, being rejected, whether it's yourself in like, oh, my perfectionism is too much. Yeah. I can't this I don't know if anyone else will want to read it and just like spreading from there and I always have said that I'm not scared of anything and by always I mean up until about a year ago um, <laughs> I have no fear what yeah. would I be afraid of who cares yeah. uh, maybe it's with age but I totally can see myself like sometimes deleting things before I post or you know mm -hmm. um, oh, this isn't what goes with my marketing plan this week, when right. that is totally not what I tell people to do. Like, I'm much yeah. better than I am at doing. <laughs> I think many, many, many of us are. I mean, we, our mess is our message, right? Like the stuff that we struggle with is often the stuff that we teach because we know how to work through it from the place of struggle. Um, I think... I really love having conversations like this because you can't edit a conversation. I mean, you can edit this video, but like <laughs> uh, much. you uh, can't edit what you're, what you're saying. Whereas like, so like when I work with my copy clients, I always have a video call with them so that I can get to know their energy and their intonation and they can tell me their story without choosing the right words, you know? Yeah. Um, because so many times when we sit down to write, we edit our own experience and like we like cut down the magic. We like take out the power that exists there, um, which is why I really love um, pen to paper writing. Um, I was talking to somebody just yesterday who has an old like, uh, what is it called? An antique 
typewriter that they got refurbished. And so they write children's stories on their typewriter because they know they're a perfectionist and they know that if they're at their computer, they're going to use that delete button as much as physically possible, but they can't when it's just a piece of paper and the click, click, click that's already moving through. So oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Made me want one. I would love a typewriter. Maybe, yeah, yeah maybe that's a one day thing. Though my yeah. mom probably would tell me, well, if you get one, you owe it to me because I was not playing with the typewriter. I was actually using it one time and I broke it. So yeah. <laughs> my was- dad let me take one apart when I was a kid. Really? Yeah. I don't know what, I don't know what they were thinking with me, but like <laughs> they let me take apart a lot of stuff that we needed later on. Ah, so yeah. Yeah. Well, you were curious. So yeah. there's her. I just like popped off buttons though and just ruined everything. I don't even think I like thought about how it was put together. Besides, I was not <laughs> a mechanical engineer. Right. Yeah. Well, at least you learned that one young, right? Yeah. Yeah. You can learn That's everything else out. through mistakes and stuff, but mm-hmm. I guess that, that wouldn't count as a mistake. That was a learning opportunity. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Childlike exploration of some kind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What's coming next for your business? Oh, goodness. Um, love it. See, can't edit myself here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I am redesigning my website, but I do wow. getting uh, stuck on the copy, and I think I need to talk to you. <laughs> because I, sp- I spoke with my voice, and I'm sure it's edited to an extent on my current website, and it's just... It, I'm, I'm not feeling it. Mm. And so it'll take some working through. And so I've been putting off working on my website because of that. And because I'll have to shut down my current one mm-hmm. in order to do that. Um, but I'm really trying to figure out how to structure my group also going forward, because I want to revamp it a little bit and make yeah. sure that there are a lot of things um, that are accessible to group members, but you have to be a member of the group. Yeah. So I'm trying to figure out how to do that going forward without, um, without not giving up too much of myself because I love to give my best content for free. Like I yeah. love it. I, yeah. I love helping people, but without running myself ragged, uh, trying to figure out how to be that different voice, not just yelling over everyone else. Right. And like, so those you are the next yourself big, there. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. And and, and in the spring, I'd like to run another round of my video course, or I'm thinking about doing something else with it. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, But I kind of, I think my mind is like, it's almost 2017. You need to wrap up some things from this year and then think about it. I need to think about it. Yeah. (laughs) I'm really excited for you. Thank you. And I'm excited for everything that you're doing as well. Do you have any, any other trips already planned for 2017? Uh, no weddings, weddings, lots of weddings in 2017. I am like 2016 has been, despite the fact that it has been like the best business year, it has been personally a year that I'm ready to move forward from. So really excited for Christmas and the new year and just moving, yes. moving forward. I am holding a retreat down in California in April or May. Oh my God. Yeah. So we're in California. Gonna be, it's yeah. going to be, we're trying to figure out, um, either in like Santa Barbara area or, um, Ojai kind of area. Um, gorgeous, but it's going to be kind of a mixture of um, physical embodiment and creative expression and partnering with a colleague of mine for it. And so that should be really, really great. So that's, I guess that's a trip that's coming. Um, But most of it is just going to be expansion. Like a lot of stuff that I'm hoping I could do DIY stuff for people, like people can explore their creativity on their own and also a lot more of those in-person experiences because I know I'm desperate for them. Right. And that's another thing that I need. I'm, I've been trying to figure out a good balance of is do people want to learn from me in order to DIY it or to work on it with someone else going forward? Or do they want, you know, I, yeah. I feel like I've been so big on DIY and then people are like, well, I don't want to do it myself. 
but hmm. you know, some of the, some of the thing with me yeah. and you, it's two completely different things with you. Right. There's, there's a DIY portion that people probably do want to like, yeah. you know, right. So it holds up, hold up a little bit and DIY, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, so we'll see, we'll see where it goes, but I'm really excited about all of your stuff and I'll have to know more about the California one that may yeah. uh, line up with another trip that I'm taking out, out West for you. It's down Ooh. South for me. It's out yeah. West. So. Yeah. Out in the wild. So, yeah. So with that, mm-hmm. I would love to, uh, ask you, uh, some rapid fire questions. Ooh. Is that okay? Yes, please. Okay, so these are from they're from the Pivot questionnaire, uh, which has been adapted for Inside the Actor Studio, uh, which you know is one of yes. my favorite shows. I love so, it. Um, I've got ten questions. You can answer rapid fire like one response, or you can okay. like go into it a little bit. It's totally up to you. Okay, um, and we'll just start, and you decide as you go. Okay, ready? Cool. Okay, all right. Number one, what is your favorite word? Synchronicity. Ooh. Yeah. What is, what is your least favorite word? Oh, squirt. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what turns you on creatively, spiritually, or emotionally? Ooh. Pine trees. Pine trees. Yeah. yeah. Do you get a real Christmas tree or a fake one, or do you get a Christmas tree? We have a fake one, a pre-lit fake one. <laughs> Because I make it as easy. I as have no time for that. <laughs> um, and then we put wreaths all over, so you get the smell without the work. Yes. Yeah. Pine needles. Mm-hmm. What turns you off? Mm. Reactivity, and I have absolutely no patience for cruelty. Oh. What is your favorite curse word? Fuck. Absolutely. (laughs) What sound or noise do you love? Oh, my dog is snoring right now. That's my favorite noise. Oh. It's so cute. That is adorable. I love it. What sound or noise do you hate? Squirting. Just kidding. Um. (laughs) (laughs) Um, That's a good question. I don't really like whining. Got that from my mom. Yeah. Yeah. What profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Oh, I would love to sing. Mm. Also, okay, actually I take that back. Um, I would be Joanna Gaines from Fixer Upper. (laughs) She looks like she has fun. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, we were watching it, and Patrick was like, how, how do you go about being them? And I was like, well, you know how to fix more than spackle and paint. Like, <laughs> you need some more knowledge. I there. could pretend, but yeah. it's not going to get me very far. That's what I would do. What profession would you not like to do? Oh. That is a great question. Oh, I don't even know. I don't think that I would want to, I would love to work with my hands. Um, so I actually used to work um, as a data entry specialist. Mm-hmm. I don't want to do that again. Okay. Even yeah. though you're working with your hands? Um, I don't know if that's my hands. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Just, it was, uh, it was a pretty rough eight hours every day. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. No more soul crushing. Mm-mm. And finally, if heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Finally. Mm. I like that one. Mm. Beautiful. Well, thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with me today. Yeah. Thank you for dealing with my tardiness. I fully appreciate it. And for like opening yourself up to talk about all kinds of things. Yeah. I really, like I said, as much as this isn't a business show, mm-hmm. um, I love it when people want to keep talking about their own because it's 
it's great. It, yeah. it just shows how, how fully aligned you are in that area, or at least how fully aligned you're working towards. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. I keep finding that it's, I think one of the things that people don't realize um, and it's been one of the most beautiful parts of being an entrepreneur is that it never has to be one thing that you can always be evolving it. Like we're not boxing ourselves in. Um, we're just working to be full, expansive, aligned, authentic versions of ourselves. So that's always going to be a work in progress, which is why I became an entrepreneur. It's because it's never boring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's wonderful to see you again. Yeah. And honestly, I hope that you'll you'll come back for more at some point. Yes, please. Yeah. Yay! Yeah. All right. I will talk to you later. Okay. I'll see you soon. All right. Bye. Bye.